Hi there, and welcome to the last Saturday of April 2022. I'm your host, Attorney Patrick Smith. This is the Attorney Patrick Smith Show, and we are with you for the next hour. The, uh, the next hour, we're here to answer your legal questions and to serve you any way we can by helping with those legal needs. 877-943-9673. That's your live and local number, open phone line. We're happy to help any way we can. Again, you can call toll-free anywhere throughout the Sunshine State, 877-943-9673. You can also email your questions, patrick at attorneypatricksmith.com. Again, the email address that you can use 24-7, actually, but during the show, we can do our best to answer your email questions live over the air. Again, that email address, patrick at attorneypatricksmith.com. Dot com back together with the usual gang back in our usual studios and oh does it feel good to be back in the studio you don't really know how comfortable you get in a studio doing your radio show until you do it in another studio and you know my only other experience was when we broadcast from Stetson University for Model Senate and I think because of all the guests I don't know it didn't really hit me as much but last week in Manhattan totally different experience. And I was telling Brian and Yana, when they came on in my ear up there, my blood pressure dropped 20 points because it felt like I was back in this studio. And then, boy, it feels good to be back with you here, uh, broadcasting right here from beautiful Tampa, Florida. So 877-943-9673, 877-943-9673. Give us a call now with your legal question. We're happy to help any way that we can. Email your question, Patrick at attorneypatricksmith.com, or give us a call now. Open phone lines, 877-943-9673. The usual crew, Brian, the call screener here, Yana, the Belarusian producer, and yours truly, Attorney Patrick Smith, here to serve you by helping with any of your legal questions today. So while we're waiting on calls to get queued up, we have a new Supreme Court decision. So on Thursday, April 28th, the Supreme Court of the United States, in a 6-3 to three decision, decided the matter of Cummings v. Premier Rehab Keller. And in this particular scenario, these are the facts. Jane Cummings, who is deaf and legally blind, sought physical therapy services from Premier Rehab and asked Premier Rehab to provide an American Sign Language interpreter at her sessions. Premier Rehab declined to do so telling Cummings that the therapist could communicate with her through other means. Cummings later filed a lawsuit seeking damages and other relief against Premier Rehab, alleging that its failure to provide an American Sign Language interpreter constituted discrimination on the basis of disability in violation of the Rehabilitational Act of 1973 and the Affordable Care Act. Premier Rehab is subject to these statutes, which apply to entities that receive federal financial assistance. That's going to be a critical factor here, the fact that they were receiving federal financial assistance. Because it receives reimbursements through Medicare and Medicaid for the provision of some of its 
services. Now, what's going to happen here? And the decision was six to three, by the way. So it was uh, not terribly close, but and you'll see from the dissent kind of where they came from. But it was a six to three decision, which is a pretty solid Supreme Court win. And Justice Roberts uh, wrote the majority opinion. But the critical holding here and the critical question was whether or not Ms. Cummings was entitled to damages for emotional distress. And when it comes to emotional distress, there's an analysis that the Supreme Court's going to apply that has to do with contract theory. And the theory of contract law that they uh, analogize it to is that punitive damages. And in general, they discuss in the decision how punitive damages are not generally awarded in contractual disputes. So we'll unpack this decision as we go throughout the show. If you have a legal question, 877 seven nine four three nine six seven three eight seven seven nine four three nine six seven three give us a call now we're live on local happy to help any way we can or you can email your question to patrick at attorney patrick smith.com again that email address patrick at attorney patrick smith.com or give us a call now we're live on local happy to help any way that we can, 877-943-9673. So the holding in this case essentially was this, emotional distress damages are not recoverable in a private action to enforce the Rehabilitation Act of 1973 or the Affordable Care Act. Now the court in this majority opinion goes on to expound the following, to decide whether emotional distress are available under the spending clause, statutes in this case the court therefore asks whether a prospective funding recipient deciding whether to accept federal funds would have clear notice clear notice it's a key term throughout this decision regarding the liability because the statutes at issue are silent as to available remedies it is not obvious how to decide that question confronted with the same dynamics in a previous case known as barnes which involved the question whether punitive damages are available under the same statutes the court followed the contract analogy and concluded that federal funding recipient may be considered on notice that it is subject to those remedies traditionally available in suits of breach of contract. Given that punitive damages are generally not available for breach of contract, the court concluded that funding recipients have not merely by accepting funds implicitly consented to liability for punitive damages. So they referenced the spending clause. That's Article 1, Section 8, Clause 1 of the U.S. Constitution, that's the authority by which uh, the United States Congress can tax, they can spend, and uh, they do that in general to pay the debts of the United States, provide for the general welfare, and here it's clear that they're using federal funds for a spending program, particularly known as Medicare or Medicaid, to provide assistance for individuals like Ms. Cummings in this particular case. And after being denied, the ASL interpreter that she requested she brought suit and the question was, did the premier rehab center have actual notice or clear notice as the court says that emotional distress damages would be available to them because they accepted federal funding? So that's the critical question. The court says no ultimately in the holding in that six to three decision. 877-943-9673, 877-943-9673. Nine six seven three. As a practicing estate planning attorney, this case sort of got my attention because of the fact that I have a lot of clients who spend time in these rehabilitational facilities, and a lot of them have these certain special needs that are covered by these statutes, and these are protective measures that they need to be aware of. All right, let's go to Steve in Sarasota. Steve, welcome to the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. I'm 
Well, well, we're going to we're going to live by the four corners doctrine here. I mean, whatever that agreement you said, we're going to be living and operating within those terms and conditions. Is the restocking fee part of said agreement? OK, so you may not be subject to that. That may just be posturing on their part. I mean, if they ask for it from 10 people and two say yes, that's a little bit more that they made. And it may be one of those situations where, you know, they're just used to people complying with their request. You kick back a little and they back off that. I think the short answer, Steve, is a good attorney needs to take a look at that contract with you. It sounds like you fully complied, but a lot of times with these sorts of issues, they do sort of make it Herculean. Uh, it's super simple to enter into these agreements. And then it's kind of Herculean to get out of the agreement. And it sounds like they tried to, I mean, I don't know. It sounds a little potentially deceptive. The fact that they you called them and they said, hey, don't bother sending us anything and we will take care of this. It's almost like it was trying to get past the three days. So I think. Well, I think you did the right thing by sending the letter. And I think that what we need to do is give them a deadline. So send them a letter saying, look, I fully complied with the terms of the contract that we've entered into. I've given you the rescission and I'm now asking for my refund pursuant to the terms. You have X number of days. So unless the contract specifies how many days they have to perform, then you go ahead and tell them what you prefer. You have seven days, you have 10 days, whatever you want to return my money or I'll have no choice but to contact an attorney. And and that hopefully the contract you entered into gives some sort of attorney's fees provision because you want to be able to not only recoup the money, but you want to also recoup the out-of-pocket attorney's fees that ha you had to employ to make yourself whole. Yeah, okay. I appreciate it. All right, Steve, thanks for listening to the show. By the way, what station are you listening on there in Sarasota? Well, Steve, we appreciate you listening. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye. All right. You're listening to the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. I'm your host, Attorney Patrick Smith, 877-943-9673, 877-943-9673. That's your live and local number to be part of our program today. It's just like Steve made it look. It's that simple. You call in with your question. We give you the very best help that we can. Yeah, door-to-door -door sales becoming very, very popular again in Florida now that the pandemic is sort of uh, dying down a little bit. You're starting to see it pick back up. So more, you're gonna see more of that. And you really wanna take a close look at those contracts before you sign it. And that's also one of those things where you can learn a lot about a person just when you say the following phrase to that door-to-door -door salesman, I wanna have my attorney take a look at this and read their reaction. And their reaction will tell you a lot about the person with whom you're dealing. So make sure you employ that tactic. 877-943-9673. That's your live and local number. Open phone lines. 877-943-9673. Or you can email your questions to Patrick at attorneypatricksmith.com. Before we took Steve's call, we were talking about the most recent Supreme Court decision that came to us on Thursday, uh, the case of Cummings v. Premier Rehab. And the ultimate holding in that is the fact that emotional distress damages are not available to someone who brought suit for the enforcement of the Rehabilitation Act or the Affordable Care Act. Now, what gets really interesting is when you read the dissent's opinion. So Justice Breyer, who's known for kind of being a maverick and, and sort of doing his own thing in this particular case, wrote a, wrote a well-crafted dissent. He was joined by Sotomayor and Justice Kagan, and the they agree with the majority on what the critical issue is. And Justice Breyer goes on to say, 
Would a prospective funding recipient at the time it engaged in the process of deciding whether to accept federal dollars have been aware that it would face such liability as emotional distress? And in the dissent, Justice Breyer goes on to say, the court looks broadly at all contracts. It says that most of the time, damages for breach of contract did not include compensation for emotional distress. So at this point, they're in agreement with the majority. And it then holds that emotional distress damages are not available under the spending clause statutes at issue here. Now you can see the table starting to turn. They're sort of turning on the majority's analogy, comparing the spending clause analysis to that of general contract law. But in my view, Justice Breyer goes on to say, contracts analogous to these statutes did allow for recovery of emotional distress damages. Emotional distress damages were traditionally available when the contract or the breach was of such a kind that serious emotional disturbance was a particularly likely result. The spending clause statutes before us prohibit intentional invidious discrimination. That kind of discrimination is particularly likely to cause serious emotional disturbance. So Justice Breyer, they're taking a, a bit of a leap, not, not a very far leap, but a leap nonetheless. Thus applying our precedence contract analogy, I would hold that victims of intentional violations of these anti-discrimination statutes can recover compens compensatory damages for emotional suffering if any respectfully dissents from the case. So it's a fine line reading there of whether or not these types of breach are uh, so emotionally tethered or emotionally entrenched that if you breach this sort of agreement denying someone an American Sign Language expert, is that so emotionally ingratiated into who they are that it would be not only emotional distress, but it would put someone like Premier Rehab on notice that they are causing emotional distress by denying that service. So that shows you how razor thin the decision really was here and how critical that analogy to contract law was and how closely this could have been to a nine to zero decision as opposed to a six to three. So, all right, let's go to our next caller. Let's go to Lakewood Ranch and talk to Patricia. Patricia, welcome to the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. Well, again, I think it's a lot like Steve's call regarding the air conditioning unit. I think you're going to live and die by the contract you entered into. Was there a written contract for these services they performed with regard to the shower? Okay, so you would have to have the attorney take a look at the contract. The one thing you want to look for, anytime you review a contract with a client, one of the things we look for is what methodology does the contract lay out if there is a dispute? And you want to see if there's things like binding arbitration, a requirement for mediation. Is there an attorney's fees clause? Where's the venue? Is, are they picking Florida? Are they picking South Florida? Is it another state altogether? And you want to look at those things because that's going to tell you a lot about what it would look like if you have this dispute. So you want to give that a quick look and you definitely want to sit down with an attorney. Now, with regard to the, the measurement being off, you said the pan was supposed to be 60 and it actually turned out to be 58, correct? Yes, ma'am.
was there any margin of error language? So sometimes when you do these contracts, construction contracts, there will be provisions in there that say we're going to build it to these specs, but there's 10% margin of error allowed for. Was there any sort of language? Do you recall anything like that in the contract? Well, there you go. I think that's where you hang your hat. I mean, if the error was on their part in hiring an installer that wasn't qualified to do the work, then you're, you have the ability to go after them as the provider, and then they may have the ability to go after the actual tradesman who did the work if he misrepresented to them his qualifications and credentials. So ultimately, now, now it is currently installed, everything's perfect. So you haven't paid the final bill, correct? And you're, when you sent them this latest correspondence, did you give them sort of some sort of deadline they had to respond by or do something by a certain date or time? Did you send the letter regular mail or certified mail? Okay, here's what I would do. I would rewrite uh, a new demand letter, cite your previous correspondence via email, send this one certified mail, and give them a deadline to perform. Tell them what you want done. And if you find yourself getting a little emotional about it, I tell clients all the time, write the emotional version of the letter, then burn it, and then go and write the Joe Friday version of it, where it's just the facts, man. So you just lay out the bullet points, tell them what you want done, give them the time to perform, and if they miss the deadline, contact your attorney and have your attorney reach out to them. Well, but, but Patricia, I'm just hoping that you don't have to lose money down the drain. See what I did there? It's a shower pun, Patricia. Well, tell them that in the letter, you know, point that out to them saying we went with you guys because we were confident in the work and say, look, the end of this story hasn't been written yet. You guys get the opportunity to write it by how you respond to this letter. And I'm sitting back waiting for the exciting conclusion. I don't know that you have grounds for that. But I would say, I would just see what they were willing to do for the additional sort of headache and troubles that you had. And if they're willing to give you some sort of break, I don't know that they're going to write the whole thing off. But I mean, if you want to be bold and ask for that, you, you know, you can't get what you don't ask for. So if you want to ask, you can always see. And I think that's a perfectly reasonable compromise. But at the end of the day, there's also something to be said, Patricia, for peace of mind. And right now you're kind of living with this day in and day out. And, you, and a lot of people carry the stress and the anxiety of these situations. And we walk clients all the time who are on the precipice of litigation. We tell them, say, look, it's not just a financial commitment to bring a suit. There's an emotional consideration here as well, because you're going to wake up with it every morning. You're going to go to bed with it every night. You're going to wake up in the middle of the night thinking about it. 
And so you got to ask yourself, how much longer do you really want to deal with the showers? How much more? Because your time is valuable. So how much more of your time do you want to put into it? Yeah. Well, feel free to say that. I mean, feel free to get to tell them that in, in your letter. And I would just say, send that letter and let me know what they say, Patricia. Okay. Patricia, you're most welcome. You too, Patricia. Bye bye. All right. You're listening to the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. I'm your host, Attorney Patrick Smith. 877 943 9673. 877 943 9673. That's your live and local number to call in and be part of our program today. You have a legal question, you call in. We give you the very best help that we can, just like we did for Steve, just like we did for Patricia. We do everything we can live over the year to give you the very best legal advice that we can. So to be part of our show, 877 943 9673 again live and local number open phone lines we'll get you and your call right on the air 877-943-9673 or email your question to patrick at attorney and speaking of email questions uh yana i think has an email question for us so yana our first email question of the day if you please Great question. So emotional distress typically comes down to being some sort of mental anguish. It's some sort of anxiety that it produces or humiliation or loss of ability to perform a task. So in other words, the, the, the act by the party, in this case, Premier Rehab, of denying Ms. Cummings access to an American Sign Language interpreter and the difficulty that it produced for her in having to communicate as Premier Rehab described through other means and that sort of clanky method of communication as opposed to providing her the, the sign language expert, uh, that is the emotional distress that she was claiming, the fact that she had to fight that battle and suffer that embarrassment. And that's to Justice uh, Breyer's dissent. That's his point, that the things that are protected here against those with disabilities are so ingratiated to their person that you cannot violate this without having clear notices, just as Breyer says in the dissent, that it would produce emotional distress. So it's it's a great argument by Justice Breyer, but apparently not convincing enough for the majority who decided six to three. There is no emotional distress, and they clung more to that traditional contract theory that said that punitive damages are not compensable or appropriate here, and therefore neither are emotional distress. That simplifies it a little bit, but ultimately that's the whole so great question 877-943-9673 that's your live and local number to be part of our show 877-943-9673 i'm going to go ahead and give out the office line because if i don't i will get some nasty emails saying you did not give out the office line enough the office number if you want to call us during the week to schedule your complimentary consultation for the Sun City Center office, Clearwater offices, our office up in Lake County and Claremont, the villages, any of those locations, 877-754-6764. Again, that toll-free number to call the offices and schedule your complimentary consultation, 877-754-6764. And you can schedule your consultation. I'll be happy to sit down with you free of charge and give you free estate planning consultation. But to talk to us today and part of our show, call in with your legal question, 877-943-9673, 877-943-9673, or email your question, patrick at attorneypatricksmith.com. All right, let's go to Clearwater and talk to Susan. Susan, welcome to the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. Good morning, Susan. Oh, I appreciate you calling in. Thank you, Susan.
Well, Susan, my heart goes out to you. I, we at our one of our homes um, actually had a, a water intrusion issue when the drain line in a uh, air conditioner backed up, and it actually backed up so much that it flooded part of the house. And uh, we were very fortunate because when we called our uh, air conditioning company, it was under warranty, and this was the hand of God part of it. It was under warranty by like eight days there was eight days left on the warranty when this happened it was something re really really close by that so I, I feel your pain and water intrusion super annoying and i i appreciate and cherish the fact that you're being so cautious about this that you don't want to make a misstep and i think that where you're going to be most successful there is by getting a copy of your hoa covenants do you have a copy of those susan and i think you need to have those reviewed by your personal attorney and then have your personal attorney reach out to the attorney for the HOA, and then you can have a coordinated effort on what you may and may not say, so that you know you can, if you decide to sell, the critical spot is there. You have a duty potentially to the buyer to disclose the, the in water intrusion. I mean, if it's a material relevant fact to the purchase of the property and the value of the property, I think you have a duty to disclose there. But you're right, you may not want to be accused of uh, some sort of false accusation or somehow uh, giving misrepresentation about the property uh, directly above you. So I think it's just a matter of walking a delicate line. I think it can be done. I think you just got to check those boxes and make sure you follow the rules. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's just a matter of, so how is that a concern to you that the property is going to take a while to sell? Well, you're not under any duty to, to disclose anything to the buyer of that new property up, uh, uh, directly above you. It would be if you were selling your property. You're not the owner of the property above you, correct? So you have no duty there. I mean, you're not the owner of that property. You have no duty to disclose. If you were selling your property, that changes. So I think you're taking on unnecessarily a burden that is not yours, Susan. No, I'm, it is false information, but I don't know that it's your duty to clarify it. I mean, if you want to bring it to the HOA's attention or their attorney's attention and let them know, I mean, I think that's you voluntarily choosing to take on that task, and that's certainly noble. But remember the age-old adage, no good deed goes unpunished. You're sort of interjecting yourself into that. The person, the person or persons with that duty to disclose are the owner of that condo unit and potentially the HOA, those are the parties responsible. You're sort of interjecting yourself into their responsibility. I mean, that's of your own free will and you sort of suffer the consequences of that potential.
Yeah, I mean, Susan, I hear you have a heart of gold. I can hear it in your voice that you just want the right thing to be done. And I think that, you know, maybe you just craft a letter and say, I understand this property is being uh, listed as no water damage, but I actually I have actual knowledge that it is. And I just want to point out this mistake to you guys. But again, if you're interjecting yourself, that's not your duty to disclose that. The duty to disclose there, the property owner and potentially the HOA, that's you're right, you could be unnecessarily interfering there. So it's a precarious spot. All right, Susan, we appreciate you calling in though, okay? You're welcome. All righty, this is the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. If you'd like to call in with your question, 877-943-9673, 877-943-9673. Live and local, we have open phone lines. Get you and your call right on the air, or you can email your question, patrick at attorneypatricksmith.com. All right, let's go to Brandon and talk to Robert. Robert, welcome to the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. Hey, Robert. So they've been sort of intermittent in their payments. And your question is, is that intermittent payment some sort of tacit waiver on your part that the payments are due? Is that correct, Robert? Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think that your uh, mercy or tolerance of their uh, infrequency in making payment can somehow be construed as forgiveness of the debt. Now, granted, it's possible you could have contracted for that in the particular uh, mortgage you entered into with them, but I don't think you would have done that. I don't think your attorney would have. Did you have an attorney prepare the document for you? Yeah, so you always wanna reach out to the drafting attorney. They created the instrument. They're gonna be most familiar with the, the creature that is that instrument. And just ask them that question. And odds are it's going to be a quick conversation. The attorney's going to say, no, the fact that they were intermittent their payments and you sort of didn't foreclose right away doesn't somehow forgive the debt or justify their intermittent payment. I believe so, based on the facts that I've heard. But again, Robert, I haven't seen the document that you entered into. So I would recommend you sit down with your drafting attorney and go over that specific question. But it sounds to me, based on what you told me, yeah, it sounds like the debt's still open. Robert, you're welcome. Good luck. Keep us posted. Let us know what your attorney says, okay? All right. All right, you're listening to the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. You can give us a call now, live and local, 877-943-9673, 877-943-9673. Live and local, open phone lines, get you and your call right on me. Email me, Patrick, at attorneypatricksmith.com. All right, let's go to Sarasota and let's talk to Jeff. Jeff, welcome to the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. Everybody's doing great, Jeff. How's your Saturday going? Well, I think you got to get them done early today, if, especially if they're outside, because it looks like this afternoon is going to be a washout. All right. How can we help you today, Jeff? Jeff, I'm so sorry. Thank you. 
Yeah, first of all, Jeff, again, my condolences on the loss of your parent and my condolences to the rest of the family. I'll say a special prayer for all of you guys. You mentioned that you're the administrator or personal representative under the will. There is a will in place, correct? Yeah. And I'm guessing you currently don't have counsel representing you on this matter. Okay. So the short version is the way you would get those assets out of a deceased parent's name is with some sort of probate order. But... There's essentially multiple tiers of probate under our probate code. The manufactured home that you referenced, did the late parent own the land underneath it or just the manufactured home? Yes. Just the home. So you said there is a home, there is an automobile, and maybe a small pension. Yeah, that's been my experience as well. Unless there is a surviving spouse, sometimes the pension will pay to the spouse, but usually not anyone beyond that. But I think you're right there. If the only assets are the manufactured home and the automobile, if you added those both together, Jeff, are they more than $75,000? Then I think you... Yeah, but, th but this, you said... You said this was a Lake County case, and you also said that this was the parent's primary residence, their homestead. Yeah, I think that either way, you're going to be able to get away with doing something called a summary probate, which is sort of a mid-tier, quicker, easier version of a probate. And what that will do is get an order from a Lake County judge saying that the property pursuant to the will is ordered to the beneficiaries described in that will. And because the property potentially is homestead, you can petition to have it declared as such. There's also a statute that allows you to exempt a vehicle potentially. And what that's going to do is make you bulletproof, presuming both of these pan out with the judge. It's going to make these assets creditor protected so that no creditors can come after that vehicle and the homestead property. I think you have to file in the county of residency or the county where they were domiciled. So if they were a Lake County resident, I have Lake County offices as well, and we'll be happy to help you if you want to use our services. Uh, but yes, we do handle Lake County cases. Yeah, presuming everyone gets along and the will is valid and self-proving, I think it's going to go quietly into the night pretty expeditiously. All right, Jeff. Jeff, thanks for calling in. I'll give out the office number here in a few moments, okay? All right. All right, you're listening to the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. I'm your host, Attorney Patrick Smith. If you want to be part of our show, 877-943-9673, 877-943-9673. Nine six seven three. Open the phone lines. I encourage you to give us a call now. You can always email your questions, Patrick at attorneypatricksmith.com, or just give us a call eight seven seven nine four three nine six seven three. Want to give out a few thank yous here. First of all, a very special thank you to uh, Jerry Haver uh, with the Association of Mature American Citizens, who was gracious enough to invite us to present for his association this past Wednesday. And the presentation, it was a packed house, and it was on homestead law. I mean, all of you who are regular listeners to the show know exactly how popular of a topic that is, and it did not disappoint that day. It was a packed house, tons of questions, and again, a special thank you to Jerry Hafer and the Association of Mature American Citizens for having us out to speak to their group. And also a special thank you to our buddy Brandon Rimes, who had us out as a guest on his show uh, for the third time now. And uh, we made our appearance, our third appearance on the Consumer Quarterback this past week. And Brandon, for those of you who are fans of Brandon's, uh, Brandon's going to be making an appearance on my show in June. So stay tuned for more about that. 
If you have a club, group, or organization that needs a speaker or a lecturer on a particular topic, you can always call the office and we'll be happy to come out and speak to your group absolutely free of charge. So to schedule that or your complimentary estate planning consultation, 877-754-6764. Again, that's your number to call the office Monday through Friday and have the staff get you scheduled for your speaking engagement or for your complimentary estate planning consultation, 877. 754-6764. And I don't know what I said, but the phones have blown up. Let's go to Sarasota and talk to Sandy. Sandy, welcome to the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. Happy to help, Sandy. It's it's laid out in the reverse mortgage, so it'll say from the the mortgage holder that from their date of death, you have X number of days or months or whatever the case may be, in order to carry out whatever they've agreed to. Usually, it's a return of the property or a sale of the property or whatever the the reverse mortgage called for. Okay. All right. You're welcome, Sandy. I appreciate you calling in. Okay. All right. All right, you're listening to the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. I'm your host, Attorney Patrick Smith, 877-943-9673. Again, your live and local number to be part of our show, 877-943-9673 to give us a call or email me, Patrick, at attorneypatricksmith.com. I think we're going to Newport Ritchie to talk to John. John, welcome to the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. It's going to depend on the contract. If you've changed it once, you can probably change it again. But look to whatever provision was in the contract, John, that you hung your hat on to make this change and see if it permits a subsequent change. Odds are it does. But look at the contract. It probably says something to the effect of an and without seeing it, I can't tell you for sure, but it probably says a writing signed or agreed to by both parties. It has to be something in writing, so the email could be sufficient, but it's something where both parties acknowledge that they consent to it. You may, and I think you're going to live and die, and you have a realtor working with you, correct? You reach out to your realtor and ask them that question, it should take them about 10 seconds to be able to give you the answer. You're welcome, John. Have a great day. All right, you're listening to the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. I'm your host, Attorney Patrick Smith, 877-943-9673. And again, to give us a call at the office during the week, it's 877-754-6764. That's your toll-free number to call and schedule your complimentary consultation. All right, let's go to Inglewood and talk to Rob. Rob, welcome to the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. Happy to help, Rob. Rob, I have about a minute, so can you be sort of quick? So you would need to speak to a landlord tenant attorney. If you write that office number down and give me a call at the office on Monday, I'll put you in touch with a fantastic one I've used numerous times. And they'll be happy to give you a sort of advice or point you in the right direction as far as uh, what your options are under that particular lease. All righty, Rob, thanks for calling in. All righty, you're listening to the Attorney Patrick Smith Show. Write this number down for next week, 877-943-9673. Again, that toll-free number for next week's show, 877-943-9673. To reach us during the week, you can call the office at 877-754-6764 for Sun City Center, Clearwater, any of our Lake County locations, 877-754-6764, or email me, Patrick, at attorneypatricksmith.com. Everyone stay safe, God bless, and go Gators.